This is uh, footage from a 2020 memorial for a young woman out in Colorado. Her name is Isabella, and you see so many people there, and you see all the pictures, the flowers, the candles, but what you really see is the incredible sadness um, on faces, because 21 years old, this is not supposed to happen. She was filled with, with life, and her life was taken. She's walking a dog, walking her dog with her boyfriend. It's just something so incredibly normal and ordinary and inexplicably shot and killed with a rifle. And it, it, it's... it's Anyway, the trial for the man who's accused of all this uh, has started, and we have some special guests joining us tonight in Denver, Colorado. Isabella's father, Joshua, and stepmom, Tiffany, who were in court. I'm so glad you could make it tonight, and I'm even more glad that you could be there in court. I know you wanted to be there and will be there. Um, welcome. Um, Tiffany, I'll start with you. How is Joshua holding up? And he's holding up okay. Good. I'm, I'm glad to see you two together and, and, and there to support one another. Um, are you, Joshua, would you, would, would you say you are prepared for what is happening? That's the fear I always have um, because I've been in courtrooms across the country for years covering trials and, and meet, unfortunately, so many people who are in your shoes. Um, and sometimes it's... It's, it's, it's so incredibly hard. Uh, some people don't know how to prepare, and I don't know if there is a way to prepare, but how are you? You know, I'm, I'm hanging in there. I don't think you can ever really get prepared for what comes. You know, this, this random act of violence was 100% on video footage start to finish. So trying to prepare yourself as a parent for your child's last breath on earth, I don't think is ever a, a thing you imagine or, or can possibly obtain in life so no prepared no um gathered as a family the best we can be we are but prepared isn't is not it so how much uh, it, are there things that are going to happen during the course of the trial things that you'll learn that you don't know already or haven't seen already you know we have been kept in the dark on this thing for two and a half years now uh, since this has been rolling out we knew as much the first day as we knew starting the court proceeding today. So all this is brand new to us. We've heard kind of rumor mills of what that is, but the facts are truly coming out now for, for us and our family and friends. Explain to folks at home um, how important it is for you to be there, to be inside that courtroom. Massive, you know, as her dad my job is to serve and protect her that's, that's my duty as a dad so for me to know every single fact and every in and out of this thing every corner is, is everything uh, and it's, it's difficult to to sit in but that's that's truly my duty and my job to get. and you know my my job is and has been to to cover crimes trials investigations like this for years um and and people at home are, are very passionate about seeing justice as well but i think there are times where i think even us in in, in the media can get disconnected a little bit and not understand how real this really is and i wanted you because um i think it would be so important to tell us what this loss is really like and and what it's like to be a victim and how important it is for investigators and prosecutors and our system of justice to to get it right here you know it's it's huge when when it's you think oh you hear stories and you think oh that's tragic it's one in a million well when you're the one of the million it it hits so hard you know and when that hits that day I lost half my heart, you know, when she passed half my heart passed along with her. So now I'm left with the other half full of her memories and 
and pictures and, and we share those experiences with loved ones, but it was such a massive blow to our everyday, to our holidays, to birthdays, to normal everyday living. When it's your child, you talk to them every day, you plug in and to not have that piece there and gone in such a tragic manner out of nowhere is it's the biggest blow you can ever think of. It's a club that you never want to be in um, as a parent when you lose your, your child. And, you know, these trials often become about the defendant and there's always so much focus on the defendant. Um, and I think sometimes what gets lost in all of this is what the case is ultimately really about. Um, and, and, and I hope that prosecutors are able to convey all of that inside the court. Sometimes it's a challenge. Sometimes it's a challenge. There's some legal limitations on what you can do, but uh, I hope they're able to do that. Now, this next question, this is, uh, I think, the, the toughest one. Um, what is it like to be in the room with him, the man who was holding that weapon? It's incredibly difficult. You know, we sit within a matter of feet from this human being. So much question runs through your mind of how did this ever become the whys, the, the how comes. And there will never be an answer that fulfills what that is. But just to sit so close to a human being with just zero regard and zero emotion for another human life is unbelievable to me. You know, we all have moments of being upset and anger in life, but to lash out like a total random act of violence, I just can never get my head wrapped around. It's incredibly difficult to sit in the same space and place with that person. Um, do you think there's anyone else to blame in all of this? I, I know there's some complicated issues here. Um, from your perspective, this, I know you want justice in this courtroom. Um, is, there, is there anyone else or any other entity or anything that, that you, you see uh, a lot of fault with in, in what happened to Isabel? You know, the hard part about this whole thing is obviously, you know, the, the gun and all of this, it's not the gun that ultimately took her life, but the lineage of how that firearm got to where it was has been a whole nother layer on top of this that's been so hard to gobble up behind the scenes um this weapon was obtained from a denver police sergeant a prior denver police sergeant um that was his best friend and all along they've asked us to be very hush hush and quiet about this thing you know this this all rolled out during the pandemic during covid during Black Lives Matter, during defund police, and they just kept saying, please be quiet, don't talk, don't talk, don't talk. And, and we respectfully did that. And I, I don't know if that was meant to push this under the rug, push it to the side, but you know, how, how that weapon from a trained, not just a street beat cop from a police sergeant ended up in this man's hands is, is another huge question mark in, in this case. Is any of that going to come out in court during this trial, or will it? It, it will. Um, yes. Joshua and Tiffany, if you could just hold it there, we're going to take a short break. If you can stay with us, we'll come back and, and we'll continue talking about this. And then I want to finish by talking solely about Isabella. We'll be right back. Thank you, man. Families of Sandy Hook school shooting victims seeking damages against InfoWars founder Alex Jones. My picture was put alongside of them saying this is the same crisis actor. There are so many people involved in this case. Alex Jones was telling his audience of millions that what you had just seen on stage is awful. The Alex Jones defamation trial. Live coverage continues Tuesday on Court TV and streaming gavel to gavel on Court TV apps and CourtTV.com. 0433. Here's a photo of uh, Isabella Thales. She was shot and killed for absolutely no reason at all. The trial for the man accused uh, has begun out in Colorado. Uh, the man accused, the weapon he had, he did not own that weapon. 
And one of the big issues in the case is how did he get his hands on this weapon? Who did he get it from? And it seems for the first time we're learning about some of this um, through what's happening inside the courtroom and still with us. Isabella's dad and stepmom, Joshua and Tiffany, are with us. Uh, Joshua, so what are you learning in court about where that uh, weapon came from? You know, we haven't figured out all those details yet. Uh, Sergeant Dan Politico will be interviewed tomorrow, um, and I'm sure more of those details will really roll out. You know, the hard piece to all this is we've learned prior through another civil case, not this criminal case against Dan Politico, um, is that this weapon wasn't re reported stolen until almost two weeks, if not more, after the murder. Um, as any gun owner knows, you know where your guns are, you know where the load is, so to have this thing come up missing like that and have no concept or clue, it seems a little far-fetched. And what kind of gun was it? Was this an AK-47? This was an AK-47. This is not some small AR-15 kind of deal. This is a weapon that is violent. It's meant for one thing and one thing only. You're not out hunting anything other than human beings with an AK-47. So an AK-47 goes missing, isn't reported missing until two weeks after all of this. Um, yeah, those questions have to be answered now. Um, tell us about Isabella. What is it um, that the world has lost here? What is it the world's lost? Uh, it's hard to talk about. It's not emotional. Um. So, but no, she she truly was one of the kindest souls in person. Never meet everybody loved her. Um, She's just a joy to everybody. You know, it's one of those that you know your kids well, and then the second the world comes to a screeching halt, you really backfill with their story and who they really were as a person. You know, this this young woman grew to have no agenda in life. There was no no racial barrier, no, no political barrier for her age difference. I mean, it was everything from black, white, young, old, you name it. It was just... Such a beautiful thing to see all the lives that really mended and, and she molded with herself on, on her journey. Was her middle name was her middle name Joy? It is. Yeah. Is that just her a coincidence, is, or how did that how did that all that happen? You know, when a child gets named, usually as dads, we don't get to pick the first name. So for me, I I was able to pick the middle name, and I said, you know, for me. Since before she was born, that was a, a joy for me, and when she fulfilled every ounce of those three letters in her name, and, uh, she's been that one that way since day one. So, uh, she's truly an amazing, amazing human being, and contribution to so many people's lives. It's just, it was wild. Well, um, Joshua, I know that. Uh you were in court today, and you're kind enough to speak with us tonight. And you're, you're such a um, strong person, and, and, and both of you uh, have each other to get through all of this. I, I truly don't know how families do it. I've been watching it for years and um, truly uh, feel so sorry that this happened to you. Um, but I, I appreciate... Uh, your strength, and I know that uh, Isabella is appreciating that strength as well. So, uh, the best to you and your family, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right. Wow, it's it's real. I mean, you have to understand, folks. All these cases we cover, they are real, and that's why I appreciate Joshua and Tiffany coming on tonight and and making it clear that you know who Isabella uh, is, still is for them, and, and still will be for them. Um, these are real cases with real victims, and that's why we always need real justice.